Welcome to the Be Strong Show. I am your host, Michelle Shirley, CEO and Chief Heart Officer for Be Strong International. I am so glad that you've joined us today. We have a really amazing show for you. Really quickly, I want to let you know about our fundraising event coming up called Hearts in Rhythm, where we are going to have just so much fun celebrating a night of philanthropy and all of the work that Be Strong does in healing families families, mending families, allowing people to love themselves well so that they can love others well. We want to celebrate all the kids, parents, married couples that we serve throughout the years. And so we want you to be there Thursday, March 14th at the Rusty Pelican. See you there. Visit our website to learn more. All right. Today I have an amazing guest I would call a dear friend and in this field of work especially. Her name is Ms. Tova Krebs. She is the president of Wellspring Counseling. And so welcome Tova to the show. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Michelle. It's just great to be here. And I, I do consider you a friend, so yes. I'm glad to join you for yes, this today. Yes, yes, yes. I know we connected um, a while ago um, and we went deep really fast. We I did. remember we. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think sometimes, you know, in this space of doing this work where it's so taxing, you we caring, we're caring for the community and at the same time, we need care, right? And we need support. Um, I would say that it was a great win for the both of us to get connect that day. And so I'm just glad you're here. I want to get into the nitty gritty really fast okay. of the mental health field. And post COVID, I want you to share with the viewers what you've seen now transpire in this landscape of the need of services for therapists and this epidemic of depression and trauma and loneliness. So, well, it definitely has changed since COVID. Uh, I think uh, COVID tipped people from thinking um, in a good way. We got rid of some of the mental stigma, mental health mm -hmm. stigmas. So we used to think those people had problems and the rest of us are <laughs> right. kind of okay. Um, and then we realized, oh, if you give me enough pressure, I could tip too. Mm, Everybody could a little good. bit. And so we had a 20% rise in therapy requests in that year of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, the main year. And so we just saw a surge. And so I think it was a good thing that happened in that um, the stigma was decreased. People now care more about mental health. I think telehealth becoming a real option. Mm. We crossed that line. And so people are desperately wanting to come back in person because we need that, but it also yeah. works through telehealth. So I think that's been a great thing. Insurance payers are paying more because they realize they need to. Need. to. It's a real yeah. need. It does affect your physical health. Um, but I also think we've seen increases in actual mental health needs. Mm. So it's not just more exposed or more accepted. I think we really do have, and statistics say we have more suicide, we have more depression, mm. we have more anxiety a lot with our youth. Uh, wow. I, there's a long list. We could talk all day about all the causes of that, yeah. whether it's technology or yeah. all these different ways we communicate and our fast paced life and the stress of too many decisions, too many choices and uh, too much information overload. There are a lot of reasons, wow. but it definitely has increased. Wow. 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 You know, I was reading your bio and your experience in this is just incredible. Over 30 years, you've been in this work of, of therapy. I started I want... when I was really amazing. Right, 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 right. When she was two, guys. She started when she was two. Um, no, but but I, I wanted to ask you, I think for me, the question is more so, what's really pressing now? Do you see more of rates of people really saying that they're depressed? Is it anxiety? And how how have you been able to grow your business through this sort of need? Well, I think you pegged it. So depression is increased. I think, um, again, I don't know the, all the societal reasons, yeah. but the quantity of information, we didn't used to know as much. And now we hear bad news all the time instantly. Mm. It's, it's a bit, oh, it's overwhelming. Anxiety is related. I think that's similar reasons. Um, but I, I also think that relationships are more disjointed because um, mm. because of our being on our devices, that some of those disconnects that are happening. So relationships are stressed as well. And then we work in the realm of trauma. And so bad things happen to people. 
and we're more aware that they affect us than we used to. You just kind of bootstrap and keep going and you didn't talk about it and nobody knew about it and somehow you moved on. I still believe those effects were just as real then for people. Wow. But I think we're more aware of it now that these bad things are happening to other people and to me. And so there's a quantity issue yeah. that multiplies it. Mm. Tell me more about your take on how you are dealing with those who come to you with this trauma um, that they've experienced. Because you seem to be even, you know, based on your experience, sort of like this um, this uh, guru around how to have help people through their traumatic experiences. Right. And teaching them resiliency. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about your approach and how you came up with some of your methodologies around navigating people through their traumas. Okay. Yeah, our niche at Wellspring is trauma, and when a therapist comes, we pressure them, and they all get advanced mm -hmm. training. So we have kind of a big group of people who, who focus on that. My practice changed many years ago when I um, got trained in EMDR, and I realized the sensory issues related to trauma. When something bad happens to you, and your body kicks in physically to help survive, you store the memories differently. That's what we call mm -hmm. trauma. So it's a bad thing that happens that you your body responds to with stress. Um, and so you store it in the sensory and not in words. And so there are different ways that comes at it. When I realized that that could be cured, um, that we can get to where we don't have to just be handicapped with a trauma forever damaged, but we could actually heal it. Mm. Um, it changed my practice. And so that's what we do. So I have developed, uh, we, I've got a team of people who work with me, but have developed a curriculum for resilience on the steps mm. that you kind of go through, make sense out of that mm. mess of emotions that you can't make sense of. Right. Am I getting better? Am I getting worse? I might feel worse first. So you kind of know that just like if you go for knee surgery, the doctor says, right. you feel worse for the first three days and then this is what's going to happen. Right. And, and so we do the same thing in trauma. This is what it's going to look like to get better. So people have a map for that. And then we have programs that have a lot of sensory related issues. So you can take those senses and use art expression and, and work with the sight, sound, smells, images mm -hmm. of the work, as well as group therapy and individual therapy. And so it's powerful to put that all together. Um, I think if you think like um, surgery, if you go for surgery, you don't go in one week and have uh, the anesthesia and the next week you they right. cut on you, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> so trauma therapy is ideally intensive because once you get in and you allow someone permission and safety to bring up all their issues and the feelings and the memories and everything that goes with it, you've got to come alongside of them the whole time until they're mm. kind of patched back together and can go back out and heal. Wow. And so that's what we do. We yeah. come alongside people while they get in those hard questions, where was God, you know, my yeah. guilt, my shame, all those mm. things. Um, so, so that's what we do. Wow. We care for people in that process of healing. I love that. That's so good. And I'm thinking it must be difficult for someone, though, to consider giving you permission. Absolutely. We have a free program for kids called Bounce for uh, an intensive trauma therapy for them, for kids who've had terrible things happen. And kids think I'm the only one, more than us adults, because it looks like all the other kids on Instagram are, are always happy, you know. And so so they really feel it. Um, but we and it's free. We have it county funded and we have to cast a huge net to get mm. a few people to come and say, I'll do it. But when they know they're in pain and we offer that safe place, they come. Um, mm. Usually, and we always say, you can come the first day and quit after that. And they <laughs> never do, but because it, it is very hard. How would yeah. I give you permission to, you know, talk to a stranger about the most painful thing in my life? Yeah. Um, it's a hard, it's a hard ask. Yeah. Um, so we encourage and we welcome and we, and, you know, we invite people, but, but it is a hard ask. People have to say, am I willing to look at this? Do I trust Wellspring enough to take care of me or mm. this therapist or this person? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a. Yeah. It's a big decision to make it's to a, trust a, somebody. Yeah, it's a hard thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a hard thing. We need a, a chief heart officer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just like, oh my goodness. I'm I'm thinking too, you know, sometimes I feel like the audiences that we even share this with, mm -hmm. if they're not in our sort of like nonprofit space, people don't know what's really happening on the ground, right? And so I want you to share a little bit about 
what you see kids really coming in with so that the people today that are watching can say, I can either relate to that or I wouldn't want that to happen to another kid. I would love for you to share, obviously not giving away a specific client story, but just what are you seeing on the ground so that people can really know this work needs to be funded? Right. Well, trauma is relative to how dangerous you think something is. So we may have kids who come in with just bullying, but just bullying can be life changing. Kids commit suicides yeah. over it, you know, and so um, bullying can be profoundly affected. Uh, offensive to people and affecting to kids. Um, but we have kids who oh, come in maybe some of these at-risk neighborhoods who've witnessed violence in their home, domestic mm. violence in their neighborhoods, shootings nearby. Um, sometimes we have kids who come, though, that are from other walks of life, so who've had cancer, so illnesses, wow. you know, where they think the rest of the world is healthy and here I am, you know, laid up in bed and out of school and um, mm. am I going to live and so we have medical illnesses, we have death, a lot of uh, major losses, uh, death of loved ones, you know, that were important to them. And particularly if you add to that, if it's a traumatic death, um, a sudden car accident or a suicide. Um, but sometimes it's not traumatic. It's just traumatic to you because your world changes the day your mom dies. I mean, it does. Wow. You know, it's not wow. the same. Yeah. Um, so, um, we also have abuse, so physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, we've worked with human trafficking, young, young people who've gotten in human trafficking. So sometimes it's those big things, but other times they're big to the person who's coming Yeah, and they need to be taken yeah, care of too. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad you were able to name that because I feel like, again, I think people need to hear what's really going on with kids and even with adults, mm -hmm. right? What they're struggling with so that people can say or make a choice as to whether or not they want to, you know, take the money out of their pocket to say, I want to support or sponsor a child, mm -hmm. right? That wants to, you know, get healed or go through the healing. And yeah. we have a youth fund oh, one okay. just for you so people can designate. I just want to help young people. I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Um, tell me more about you have this program called the art of listening. And I'm just like, I think every married couple might need to take it that does. course when it, it might. comes to listening, right? <laughs> yeah. um, talk about that. I, I think that's interesting. Well, it's kind of grown for me. We do the storytelling side, you know, in all our trauma work and things like that. And, and it's powerful to tell a story. It's also powerful human connection to hear a story. Um, but I think people don't listen. We don't have places and opportunities to listen very much in our society, to be heard. And so I can't fix you being heard, but I can train you to listen and maybe someone will, will return the favor. Mm. But uh, so we talk about the power of speaking and listening, storytelling and listening, and how it is healing. You know that husband-wife thing is like uh, that we all have where, you know, the husband thinks you just want me to fix it. And no, I just want you to listen to me, right? And so the, the disconnect there is that we don't realize that listening is doing something. We think we're listening in order to make a decision or solve it. But the listening itself is he a healing agent. And mm. so teaching people how to listen, how to not interrupt, how to respond, how to separate when they respond from when they listen, how to, they're just, I have a list of 10 skills and, and mm. we, we do all need them if with our kids, with our parents, with our spouses, with our friends, with our colleagues. Uh, we have this thing where we think, if I let you say it, I've agreed. And that in our cancel culture, that's mm. really true. We don't want to hear your side because if I even let you speak it, I've condoned. That's not true. You can speak it and I can listen without interrupting and with respect. And I can say, um, I have a different view than you do, but thank you for sharing. Like that just doesn't happen anymore. And we also don't let people tell their whole stories very often. So in normal dialogue, you're supposed to take turns. So as soon as I start telling my story, you say, oh, and that reminds me of mine. And we do this back and forth thing. And it's great relationally to grow that way. But we never finish. Have you ever been at something where you started right. to tell a story? You never got right. to finish it? Right. Yeah. So training people to actually let people tell their whole story. Mm. Oh, it's just like the greatest gift ever to have mm. someone not interrupt and let you finish. Yeah. 
But we don't slow down to even do that, it right? Takes it's that. it takes that slowing down, and it takes. I think for me, um, it's interesting you say that because I've been working on lately. When someone walks into my office, stop, turn, mm -hmm. and actually listen, right? Very good. <laughs> and it's been this. You know, I have this still edge, like, but. I need to send this email, right? <laughs> and so I'm listening, you know, and I'm doing the multitasking or even with the kids. Exactly. And just being more aware, I think, also is something that, you know, should be just, I don't know if people are aware of the fact We're that not. So I, I just try to teach to help people be aware. And I think God has had me teach this for <laughs> decades because I'm still being reminded to do it myself. <laughs> so like, how can you teach listening, my family? How can you teach listening, Toba? You know, so because I'm working at it. <laughs> It, it is hard. I was in court recently, just as in, in the audience, yes. and it's the only place I can imagine where nobody talks until somebody mm -hmm. finishes. And it's so slow. <laughs> it's so painful. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to implode sitting in the, the, the little pew going, oh, my, oh God. my goodness. <laughs> it is. It is. It takes time. And that's why it's a mm. gift to mm. give to people, because it does take time. And we want to do 10 more things. That's and powerful. It's hard. Patience is a gift. It, it is. Oh, my goodness. That's powerful. See, these nuggets are just coming through the screen. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Well, I want to shift a, a okay. bit to our social game. yaks game. You are aware of this game. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want the audience to get to know you better as well. Um, you're an amazing leader in your own right in this movement. And... Um, we're just going to have a little fun here. So okay. I want you to choose the first card, breaking the ice, and then you're going to read it aloud and then answer the question. So okay. let's get to know you. So it's, it's hard for me to remember quotes. This says, <laughs> what's your favorite quote? But one I put on my slides sometimes when I'm teaching is by John Breyer, who's a trauma specialist. And he says, healing is feeling great pain in the presence of great love. Mm. I love that quote. Wow. That we heal by being loved yeah. while people listen to our pain. So anyway, so yeah, that's when I can remember. Wow, wow, wow. And, and I can see you get like, you get, you get, you get moved uh, by yeah, that. I yeah. do, I do. It's yeah, true. Yeah, it's, it's incredible work. Yeah, that's powerful. All right. Let's take another one. All right. Go, go, the, no, go no, deeper, no. right? Let's take Which another color? One. Let's go, oh, another one of these. Break the ice. Yeah, okay. Break the ice a little more. <laughs> At a party, where can someone find you? Well, there's the food. <laughs> no, she loves food, guys. <laughs> and we won't talk about the drinks on the show. But but, but actually, uh, sometimes I go to a lot of events with my mm -hmm. husband. And um, I sometimes that social chit-chat is hard for me because mm -hmm. I'm actually an introvert. Oh. And so I love people, so I don't always look like an introvert, <laughs> but I actually am. Oh. So I might be hiding a little bit. <laughs> Or if I'm happy and, and successful for the evening, I will be sort of in the side having a really deep, meaningful conversation yeah, with somebody. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I kind of go into these events looking for someone to have something meaningful to talk. You're, yeah, because we went to an event together where <laughs> my son was there. And you and I, that's how we just started talking and that's connecting. True. And uh, you were not on the dance floor. That is correct. That's <laughs> true. I do like to dance, though. But you just for the record. <laughs> I don't remember seeing you that night. <laughs> All right, we're going to move okay. to the next level. Next Let's level. get social. What are you most passionate about? Uh, can I ignore the word most? Because <laughs> I probably have a good five solid things. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I think I, I think just um, it shows in my work and where I spend all my time and energy, um, other than family and things like that, but right. um, and art and things I like. <laughs> But I am most passionate about helping people move closer to God mm -hmm. or to understand or appreciate him, mm -hmm. that he's good, that he's safe, that he's present. Mm -hmm. that he... So I, one of the things about doing trauma work is it, it helps people wrestle with where was God and is he good and does he love me? And those things, because wow. you get there quickly. And I'm passionate about them knowing that God is there and he is good hmm. and so it's not always like this become a christian thing it's a it's a trust god more thing 
I think that's what I'm most passionate about. Wow. It's about my life. Powerful, powerful. And what a legacy you are leaving behind, my friend. <laughs> okay, you got more. Okay. Yes. <laughs> if money or education weren't an issue, what would you love to do for a living? <laughs> well, I'd like to think I would do exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I I want to get a doctorate, but I'm just probably never going to do that. But... <laughs> But money would actually allow me to love what I'm doing. I, mm. I'm i passionate about what I'm doing, but I don't always love it because it's hard. And if I had limitless money, I would just be fun all day, every day. Because mm. uh, I had ideas. I yeah. got lots of ideas. Right. I think that's our problem <laughs> as, visionaries. as visionaries. Lots of ideas. <laughs> and then the team is like, no, no more ideas, please. Let's, let's stick I've with the I've learned to dole them out. I write them on a list that they don't know because they get overwhelmed. And I'm like, okay, but you know, so now I have a 10 year plan that they haven't seen yeah, yet. You yeah. know, but... we, have, we need a round table about that. Just that. <laughs> oh but I, yeah, money would free up the joy mm. in work, I think. Yeah, so. I think yeah. And is that is that just to dig a little deeper, is that because of the nonprofit fundraising side of it as far as the money? Yeah, mental health loses money. That's why the big hospitals don't do outpatient mm -hmm. mental health. Um so as an industry, it doesn't stand alone uh with any overhead at all. Um and nonprofit is asking people to support other people to have healing. So it's just hard work. Hmm. It's fun to give. It's fun to see. And it's rewarding to um, do it. And I think it's good for us to ask and to invite people to join us in the pleasure of doing the ministry. So those, it's not all negative. You know, it's just that it it's, it's hard. hard. Yeah, I, I get it. I just wanted you, know you to share you it. With, it. I, I, I understand what <laughs> you're saying. I just want you to share it with the, the audience because it's, it's hard not, work yeah. to do the work and to encourage people to join you in doing the work. Yeah. Um, at the yeah, same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I, 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 get, I get it. <laughs> All right. We're going to dig deeper. Okay. These are deeper questions now. Um, what's something you would change about yourself and something you wouldn't? Well, I, I don't know if this is all that deep on the what I would change. I would be more disciplined. Everybody wants that, I know, right? but it's true, you know. I, I'm back at the gym again. Okay. I took a few months off and I'm back on my, you know, nutrition and healthy. I'm on my healthy right. efforts. And so I would change my personal discipline and even the order in my home, right. you know, so I would change that. I'm okay. always wanting to but I'm trying to strive for that. Um, something I wouldn't, um, I think, this, I don't want to sound braggy, um, but I have feedback from others that my authenticity is a piece of who I am, and I wouldn't want to change that. Mm. So it gets me in trouble sometimes because <laughs> I, I say what I think and I mean what I say, and sometimes you should just be quiet, <laughs> you know, but there's not a surprise or a deception or an angle, and so I think I think that helps people trust just me. Just you and, genuinely and being you. Me. Yeah. 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 For better or for worse. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. All right. We've got time for one more. Okay. Let's go a little deeper. I think I kind of answered this now. I, what is something you think people do not understand about you? And I think I kind of answered that, yeah. I, that I'm an introvert. Yeah. People get surprised by that. And I think people sometimes think I'm like at church, you know, you're aloof or you're ignoring me. And I literally am not. So I don't think I'm, they understand that yeah. I just sort of sometimes get in a zone. Yeah. And, um, you may have to share that more <laughs> because I think as a, I think as a CEO or a president, people expect for you to be this, not just fundraiser, not just running the business, but this extrovert, you're networking, you're doing all these things and not everybody wants to do that. Right. Or is ingrained in some of these areas to be able to do that. So I think. Yeah, I think I ha share. do have to share that. And I have had to become three different times in my life. I've had people come up to me after they've thought and prayed about it to ask me if I was offended by oh. them or if I was angry at them. And in all three instances, I was completely at peace with them. I had no negative, mm. nothing. And so they, so once it happened more than once, I realized, oh, I come off that way. 
And yeah. that's not good. I know. And I didn't, and I don't mean to. So you I, don't mean to yeah. apologize and whatever. And I try to be much more conscious of it as a leader. Yeah. But I, I recognize that that can happen. Yeah. Um, I have a very good friend now who says, yes, you, I used to think you were aloof, but now we're fine. I finally made it through and we're friends. I feel so bad. You know? <laughs> Yeah. But, so anyway, I, I do need to tell people, and if I've done that to you, please come and uh, t- and ask forgiveness. And I will. I, I mean, ask me. Let me repent and for- ask forgiveness. I cannot. <laughs> because I, I think That's I wanted so at my funny. funeral. I've thought about leaving a little card in my funeral. Please forgive me if you ever thought I ignored you. To everyone who's out there, <laughs> I was just wanting to be in my own space because being around people makes me nervous or whatever. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I'm not anxiety. that bad, but but there are occasions. So yes, I think people need to understand that about me. <laughs> they will know after today. For Thank sure. you. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the last level of the game. Um, this was great. It's about opening up and connecting. And this last card, you're going to read it, but I'm going to answer it okay. for you. So I'll be the one to kind of seal you're the wisdom. This. Well, I so just for today. Okay. <laughs> If everyone had a special mission in life, what do you think mine would be? Hmm. I think you're already working in your special mission. I think the the concept of wanting to be that instrument to heal others is just profound. And it's something so intricately delicate that God has given you and using you in this way as a gift to others. And you are multiplying this in so many ways. I mean, to grow from five therapists or two to now over 30 is just incredible. So I think you're already in your mission. And I'm hoping that you get all the resources that you need because I don't think there's a person that doesn't need healing in some way. Mm -hmm. in some way right we're all engaging in relationships with different people and so hurt happens right misunderstandings happen um unmet expectations happen us even not being kind to ourselves Mm -hmm. can happen right and so here you are saying i'm this safe space this open door and i'm giving you permission to let all of this come out and for me to reflect it back to you in a way that makes sense to you so that you can walk in your healing. I think when people walk away from that, they're forever changed, right? And the legacy that they birth changes. And that's all because of you. Thank you. So I think you're walking in it and I think you're doing amazing. I admire you. I know more about you today than I did yesterday. (laughs) Um, And I think you're just an incredible human being. So keep doing what you're doing. Um, I'm super proud of you and I'm cheering you on on the sidelines, <laughs> like do your thing. I want you though, to take a moment. We have two minutes left and I want you, if there's someone today that, you know, is hurting and they are just contemplating, you know, should they go to counseling? I don't know if I want to give someone permission to go into that space um, I don't know if I want to unload like that. Maybe that maybe it's this, like you said, the the past of strapping up your boots and just going through it. What would you say to that person if you could convince them to take a step of faith towards getting some help? And then this is okay. your okay. You know. Um, yeah. Let I would say just take a risk. So there's some there's some safety nets. One is you can go and you can always stop. The other is you don't have to say anything you don't want to say. You don't have to, you won't be forced to reveal. Nobody's going to read your mind. Um, it just might make a difference and it might work. I believe it profoundly will. I want to say to you, there's hope. I want to say, don't give up. I want to say, just be honest, go with your full messy self and don't try to make a good impression because then you've wasted your money and time and energy. And that there, there's real hope. People can change. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter how set we are in our ways. 
it can be hard, but it can be good. And also, sometimes there's this thing that I'm going to go to therapy forever and I have to do this forever. And that's not true either. You can go and work on one thing at a time and come back the next year and pick another thing. It's kind of like going to the gym. You, are you working on endurance? Are you working on strength? Are you working on your look at your body and, and you can do the same thing in therapy. You can go and enhance a marriage or a relationship with a family member or you can dig deep and you can, you know, become resilient or you can just become more positive and have better habits. So so um, take the risk. The risk is for you. And um, I would encourage you to just know there's hope. Hmm. Thank you so much. That's that's amazing. Where can they find out more about you? wellspringmiami.org. Find us on our website. Uh, call our phone. Someone's there to help match you with a therapist. We do counseling, professional licensed counseling. We do mental health education, and we have programs, specialized programs, particularly for trauma. So wellspringmiami.org. Awesome. Well, Tova, it was a pleasure to have you on the show today. Just a very moving, amazing um, show today. I hope you learned and got something out of it. Here at Be Strong, we love you, we care for you, and you can reach out to us as well, bestrongintl.org, and see you next time.